Welcome back to Yarnotopia. It is Vlogmas Day 15 and I am finally getting to come out here and record a little bit with you all. It has been another crazy Alabama day. I think it's like 65 degrees outside again and this morning it was pretty cold. It's just so crazy. And here we are so close to Christmas and we are going to decorate today. So in honor of today's decoration extravaganza i have on my lovely christmas gingerbread man and i'm pretty pumped i did find some more totes that i'm not sure if it has christmas stuff in them or not or what's all in there so we're gonna dive in and see and then when we get to the ornaments i will talk about them any of the ornaments that are handmade that have patterns i will definitely link below in this video so you can make those as well and let's, let's go drink some coffee, get merry, get bright, and get this place decorated. I don't know if you just saw that, but I plugged up the tree and apparently I have a light missing. So this is going to require another peppermint. Found the culprit for the tree incident. You see that? Like, how does that even happen? I don't know. As far as Christmas stuff, I do have some stuff up there. I showed them in an earlier Vlogmas. There's the really cute little Aldi's that's part of my Christmas village that's going to be out here. And, and there's the knit shop. This is something that I found at Michael's this year. This is so adorable. But look at the cute little uh, yarn balls and the little st stuffy. So very cute. So obviously with this, I had to buy the corresponding Lee Max over the top sweater shop. So let's open this up. Like simple as it is, one of my favorite things are the little trees from the Dollar Red Spot, especially the ones that have the lights in them. They are so pretty, especially this one I got this year, I think. If you haven't seen these, you might want to check and see if your store has any because they are battery operated and they're just really pretty to have sitting around. So now let's talk ornaments because I think that is what is in this tote. I do know that's what this is. This is something that is not actually made with knitting or crochet, but it has to do with knitting or crochet and it is handmade. And these are really fun to make. We made these one year as a family. And that is these little glass ornaments. And so you just use some regular acrylic paint. I use the kind that you use on an overhead projector and you paint on it. Cut it out, make sure you leave a little lip, the shape of an ornament, you can see it right there. That way you can roll it up, stick it in your little ball, and it pops open. Put your little lid back on it, and you're good to go. Some of it you can actually print on. So we took a picture, a black and white photo of them, and we printed it on this, cut it out, and you can see here's one of my kids right here that we did this with. But naturally when I made mine, I had to make a sheep. Another fun and easy ornament that you can make with your kids is with pom-poms, especially if they're little. Little kids love to play with pom-poms in their little hands. It really helps their fine motor skills, picking them up and sorting them. And that's what I used to do with my kids a lot was I would find things like this and I would get them to separate the pom-poms and colors or in sizes. And then in this case, we just got some and we glued to them to a piece of cardboard and then made a reef. And it's just super easy and it only uses a little bit of yarn to make pom-poms and it's something that even little kids can get involved in. 
The next ornament I want to talk about is the Wee Snowman. I actually made two of these. One of them I gifted in an ornament swap, but it will always be in my heart and in my Ravelry projects because that thing was adorable. But this is the one that I kept. This is a pattern by Jesse Austin Miller. It's from the 2016 Interweave Magazine Holiday. And you can also get the pattern online. I will link it down below. But it is absolutely adorable. There's actually a whole snowman army. You just make them different sizes. And I need to do that because I really enjoyed this pattern. I use a Feza Yarns Capri, which is a sport weight yarn for mine. That is what its little white color is, as well as the other colors from it. But he is so adorable. And I knit him on a one and a half. And then I made him a cow and wrapped it around his neck so he doesn't get chilly on the cold winter's night. <laughs> he is so, so cute. So cute. This is actually a cr crocheted item. This is actually store-bought. This is something that I saw at Target, I don't even know how many years ago. I don't even think my oldest child was walking at that time, but I had to bring it out here just because he's crocheted. And I keep telling myself that I'm just gonna make a pattern of it, kind of like a copycat, but he is so adorable. I am someone, when I'm out and about, and I see something that's crocheted or knitted and it's like at a thrift store or a state sale, I really have a moment of consideration about bringing that home. And that's kind of what happened here with this. There was a whole bunch of these that I found at a state sale. And I mean, it's really old. You can tell it's older make. I love how they did glitter with glue and the sequence on there. I've been meaning to look up a pattern for this so I can make some more, but I just couldn't leave these behind and so I bought the whole bag of them because I didn't want them to go to someone who was not going to appreciate them or trash them and they would get many, many years of love with me. So that is why I brought them home. The same with these. I didn't make these. Someone else did, but I thought they were super cute. And I can appreciate the work that they put into these. And so I brought them home. Now this one I did make. So I typically do the She Reads Advent Bible study. I really enjoy their Bible study because it's basically just scripture. But it used to be with the Advent study, you got a cross stitch to make along with it. And this is one year's. And I just thought it was so pretty. And so I made it and I love how it turned out. And this may be something that I just leave up year round out here. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay. Going back with the not actually knitted or crocheted ornaments, but still handcrafted, we have the shrinky dink ornaments and I'm not, I cannot remember whose video was talking about doing shrinky dinks anymore, but we still make shrinky dink items. We love making them every year. I have this in front of me. This is one that I just kind of drew this sheep knitting. It's it's not pretty, y'all. It's hand drawn. Give it be nice. <laughs> in 2013, when I first started knitting, because I wanted to remember that, because I knew it was going to be a vital part of my life, and I thought no better way than in a 1980s shrinky dink kind of moment. So. Love how it came out. And then we got these kits from Target Dollar Spot and we made these one year. These are the ones that I did. And you write your little Christmas wish list. So mine, I wrote Santa, I want snow, a watch, yarn, yarn bags, candy, and cotton candy. Cause I love me some cotton candy. And I did that because that year we actually got my youngest son who, he says he's going to grow up and own a bakery. He he likes his little junk food. He's a little Hufflepuff too. <laughs> and we got him this cotton candy maker. And 
it was like the funniest thing ever. Every time he made cotton candy, he put on this hat and he put on this apron and he like stood behind the island like he was working in a bakery and passing out goods to the customers. It was very fun. And then I painted or I colored a unicorn with a scarf on it. And then the cute little seal with a hat on it. Another unicorn with a scarf. Can you, can you sense that everything I do is with yarn? And then a sloth with a sweater. But that was a very fun, fun year of Christmas magic with our kids. So the next little hand knit ornament would be a wee sweater that I made. So the gnome creator, who is Sarah from Imagine Landscapes, she, way back in the day, 2015, she came up with this little pattern called We Sweaters. And I was one of the test knitters at the time. I was only, had been knitting for two years. And now this little sweater is free on her website. So I'm definitely going to link that down below for you. But I used some Plymouth and Yarn Happy Feet in the colorway lipstick. But it's just some fun pink and red, super cute little sweater. And it's little hanger is actually made out of a piece of wire. So it's just a circle. You can actually bend it to make it more hanger-esque, but it worked well for this little sweater with it just kind of bent. And it looks like an actual little metal hanger that's hanging on. So the next handmade ornament, and this is another knitted one. I'm more of a knitter than a crocheter, although I'm wanting to do a little bit more crochet. I tend to only crochet stuffies. So that's something I want to change though for 2024. And there's going to be a lot of actually making of crochet and knitted items. A lot more than you have seen this year. I can tell you because I have a whole new adventure. It's not a new to me adventure because I've done it before, but I cannot wait to share more details with you in the upcoming videos. But the next ornament is called my Sparkle Snowdy. And this is a pattern that is from, is it Lena Scaversia? Scaversion? She does a lot of patterns for Annie's and Annie's catalog. And this was in the Deck the Halls 20 Knitted Christmas Ornaments from Annie's that I reviewed a couple years ago. Quick note, I went to go attach the original review video to this video, but then I remembered that that was on my channel that was deleted. So I did find the blog post. So I'm going to link the blog post about this book down below because it is a great book. And if you're wanting to make a lot of knitted ornaments, then this may be one you want to put in your list. And I'm also going to drop the affiliate link with that in case you would like it. And I used just some worsted weight yarns. This sparkle yarn was actually one of those yarns that you used to find at the Dollar Tree that had like no name brand whatsoever. It was just in this pink or purple wrapper before they started carrying Premier yarns. And that's what this is. And it just has a silver strand of sparkle with it. And then I used some leftover yarn that I think was just sent to me in a happy mail to make its cow. Cause I thought that make it more special since it was given to me. This pattern and all the ones that I am talking about in this video, again, are going to be linked down below. Some are going to be free, some are going to be paid for, but I'm going to link them just in case you want to check them out. So the next two are very special to me because the way that I got the little kit for them is something that I will never forget because it led me to a friendship and someone who I really consider a friend and I've known for so long now. And that is Gina from A Knitting Turnpike. So way back in, when was this? 2019, probably before that, because it took me a while to actually make them. So I probably got this from her from 2017 or 2018. I saw in a Facebook group, this lady who was selling this really cute kit to make these adorable little fat cats. And we were a cat household. So I messaged this sweet lady and I'm like, I want to buy your cat kit. And she's like, okay. 
And that was Miss Gina. And we have been friends ever since. I'm just super grateful that these cats kind of brought us together. And it's a pattern by Manamushi Land. I know you're going to come at me for how I say things. I don't know how to say this thing. But they are adorable. So it came with the yarn to make two of them. The little gray cat and the little orange cat. And... I love them. Every time I see these every year since I made them, I just think of Gina. And so Gina, if you see this, they've been on my main tree since I made these in 2019, always up front. And seriously, every time I see them, I think of you and I send love, hugs, and prayers to you. So thank you so much for listing this so that we found each other. Another little make I have is something that I did in cross stitching and that is a cute mushroom. I love mushrooms here in the fall. They are everywhere usually. We have a decent amount of rain, especially at the end of the summer. Here's another one of the wee sweater ornaments from Imagine Landscapes. This one I gave a little bit longer arms and I, I tried to do a little something there to make it look like color work with the yarn. I think I just did like a little bit of ribbing or slip stitches to do that. And then I did the ribbing on the bottom. And this yarn is some something Meyer On Your Toes Bamboo. This is a kit that I got last year to make ornaments with from the Target Dollar Spot that obviously I didn't even use. Maybe we'll do it this year. Maybe we'll do it next year. Who knows? As I come to the ornaments that are knitting and crochet related, but they are mass marketed, and from big box stores. I'm not going to show those in this video. I'll just show those when I do like an overall look of the tree. But I do want to point out one of them because this was one of my favorite ornaments that I got years ago from Target. And that is this really cute yarn basket that has knitting needles in it and little balls of yarn and spools of yarn. It is absolutely adorable. It's probably been about four or five years. That I've had this because I had this in my original craft room and that's been a while. So cute. This one was handmade I think but not by me. This was actually sent to me from my friend Deborah, and every year she gets me the cutest gifts that well here's another one that she sent me and this little sheep I think she got it at a local market in her area that was handmade and it's super adorable but this one she actually did knit the sweater for me on the alpaca and this little sparkly a yarn so so cute and i've had these for several i know i've had this one for a while deborah can probably remember when she got me this one she knows that my brain is always focusing on too many things but there's always a little something from Deborah on my tree every year. Speaking of which, Deborah did send me a box this week. I got it yesterday and we're going to try to open it probably today or tomorrow. Probably going to have to be tomorrow, but shame, shame. I did not know you were sending me a box <laughs> again. You sent me a box last year. I think you just like doing this to me so that I'm just kind of like, good grief. And knowing Deborah, it's going to be some good stuff. Okay, let me be honest. Hang on, I'm gonna need coffee. I may have peaked. I did peek. There was a little peeking. I did like slice the tape just ever so gently. Cause I'm like, what is this? And then I opened the box and I saw chocolate. And not just any chocolate, but I saw the little pumpkin chocolates that I love that I got from Aldi in the fall. And I think I actually like screamed out loud. So I haven't had them yet. I've been really, I like closed the lid and I'm like, I walked away. So I'm very proud of myself, but we're going to open that and see what craziness she crammed in. This one is very special. I did not make it, but my mother, my mother got on the interwebs, found Etsy, went through Etsy and found something that was handmade and it dealt with knitting. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. But it's this cute little owl, because I do love owls. And it is knitting on a little scarf. And this is hand felted. So stinking 
cute. So cute. I was so proud of my mom. So proud of my mom. She occasionally watches this, so mom, still, still happy about that. This is another ornament that my friend Deborah knit me. It is a cute little owl, because I do love birds. I love the little owl. I like the little wings that she did. It's big old eyes. So this is something that I actually knit. This is, and this is from that same Annie's book, The 20 Knitted Crocheted Ornaments. And this is a moose. His name is Donner. I use DK Weight Yarn. He is so adorable. Goodness gracious. I think the pattern was written in a sport weight, but I wanted to use this brown and all I had was in DK weight. And then he has this little scarf and look at his little cute antlers. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. He has little sewn on eyes. He even has his little tail. But he was really, really fun to make and he's pretty easy design. I had to make the legs separate and then sew them on. I hate doing that. <laughs> Next time, I would just pick up stitches and knit them on. I think this one came from Miss Pat, who is a local lady at our knitting group. Miss Pat kind of is over the local library knitting group and now kind of over our knitted knockers. We, we knit the knitted knockers and some people crochet them. We supply the hospital with them, the local hospital. But I think she made this one. This is a crocheted reef and it's made over a milk ring these are a really great way to recycle this the ring that comes off the milk this one was red and you just crochet around it there's a lot of patterns online for these and then she tied some little green bows and it makes adorable little reef so back in the day when we had local yarn stores <laughs> we used to have a local knitting guild and I would set up a Christmas get together with Deborah every year. We were like, I guess the chair people of the knitting guild. That was my knee that popped. If you heard that, I apologize. <laughs> Old volleyball injury. And we would do this Christmas party every year with the local knitters and crocheters. And then I kind of started this ornament exchange and you would bring an ornament and we kind of do like dirty Santa with the ornaments. So much fun. And one year I got these. They're little Christmas pears. They are so cute. I think there's actually three of them. There is. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I can't remember who it was that knit them at the Christmas party and then I got them. But I love my Christmas pears. For many years, they were on our main tree. But since I have this space, I thought I would bring them out here. Look how pretty the leaf is. So this is something that's not made by me. It's not knitted or crocheted, but it has very special meaning to me. So this is a hand carved little ornament. It's a little bear. I actually have several pieces. There's a airplane and then there's this little girl, but they're all in the main tree. But I wanted to have one of them out here with me because it is a handmade ornament. And the reason these are so special is these were actually carved by a local Santa Claus. <laughs> How cool is that? So we had a local gentleman who played Santa every year at the local mall and he passed away a few years ago and they had a estate sale. And I went to the estate sale that he had or that they had at his house. And this man was the epitome of a small town Santa Claus. His house was covered in Santa Claus stuff. Apparently he had it decorated 24 seven, 365 days out of the year. And like their little back house where he had like his little club Santa club house was nothing but tropical Santa stuff. It was the cutest thing. It was a pool house. Um, it had like a small pool out in front, but they had a bag of his ornaments and I took my kids to see the Santa every year and they had their picture made with this Santa every year. And I really wanted something to commemorate that. And the ornaments, once they told me that they were something that he had made, I was just kind of like, that's, that's definitely what I would like to buy. And so I just think they're pretty special because they were literally hand carved by Santa Claus. This is not a handmade ornament, but this ornament has to do with yarn. So the first time that I ever joined a yarn box or club was 
when I got this. And that was with this yarn. So this is the, the Snicker Doodle Base or Snicker Rooney Uni Base. This is up in yarn designs. Look at this. And this is the ornament it came with. This is the colorway Commando Christmas. It's so much fun. I really enjoyed her yarn club as well. I'm not sure if she still dyes yarn. If she does, I will link her Etsy shop or wherever her shop is. But I got this ornament as part of that kit and I've used it on our tree every year since. And I think I got this like way back in the day. Another little knitted ornament. This is from that same 20 knitted ornaments book that Amy's put out, Deck the Halls. And I really, I like it. It's just kind of a pinwheel. It's just made by picking up stitches and doing some decreases. I probably should spray it with something to make it stand out more, but it's fine. I have made a few trees in my time frame of knitting and crocheting. This is the Pint Size Pine Doubled. I used a fingering weight yarn. This is Madeline Tosh Unicorn Tails in the colorway Jade. And then I used a cork for the bottom of the tree. It is hand knit with a cable. And this is actually almost the exact same kind of cable that I'm using for the tree I'm knitting now, but it just uses the cable in a upside down position like this, where this one uses it going up. I thought that was pretty interesting, but I love Madeline Tosh yarns. I love the color variation they have, and this was a very fun project to make. I used a little bit of twine to give it kind of that rustic look to hang it with. I think I actually made some of those to give away with that ornament exchange one year. Looking at my notes, apparently the pattern is only comes in the one size, I guess, maybe different patterns. I put down that I just doubled my original stitch count and that made it bigger. So that makes sense. That might be why I called it doubled. And I obviously could not find a cork that was small enough. So I actually just went out in the woods and got, I think this is maple. Yeah, that's maple. Maple, a stick, broke it off and called that the trunk of my little tree. I did find this really cute little yellow star button that I had in my stash and I used that, but I just think it makes super, super cute little trees. And now that I'm out here in this space, I want to make a bunch of these and just kind of have them sitting around at Christmas. I think that would be super cute. So I may have to do that this coming year. Apparently I don't have a project page for this one. I remember making this because this is some yarn that I actually got from my mother-in-law or I found at my mother-in-law's house. This is some really old Red Heart yarns. I think it's called Flet and it's really pretty. It's, it's kind of rough. And then I used some Red Heart, just the brown. And I made it just using single crochet and then I just closed it at the top and crocheted it together so that it had little ears of the owl and use button for its eyes. It's not the prettiest. I distinctly remember making this my first year of crocheting. So it would been 2013, 14. I really thought I had a project page on this. I guess not. This was made for me from another local and this was made by Miss Anne. And she made this little Santa Claus for me. It's super cute. He goes on my tree every year. I love him. This is another handmade ornament. It was not made by me. I think my friend Deborah actually picked this up at a festival for me. It's made out of pieces of a sweater, an old sweater and some felt, but I think it's a super cute idea to make and reuse, especially if you have a sweater that you felted on accident and you don't know what to do with it. You can cut it up and make adorable little ornaments to give to everyone in your family. And I just think it's precious. And again, it's an owl because I like owls. Now the next things that I made are the snow buddies. And this was a pattern that I made a long time ago. It is a Susan Claudino pattern, who is one of my favorite stuffy makers. But this was a whole set. It comes with the four buddies. It comes with the snowman, a mouse, a bunny, an owl, and a reindeer. I apparently did not make the bunny for whatever reason. I just made one a snowman. But this is my reindeer. These are using all worsted weight yarns, acrylic scraps, but I made these all in 2014. But this is my reindeer. And I just used a um, pom-pom, like a store-bought pom-pom for their nose. Super cute though. I love how these are made because it's a super thought out pattern and it is a paid for pattern. I'm not gonna like give out all the deets but super enjoyable knit. 
So there's that one. And then the snowman, which was supposed to be a bunny rabbit. Again, I was only knitting for a year. So tension was a problem for me. And I used two small of eyeballs on this one and they're kind of trying to pop out. So I have to be careful with him. And I don't really know what is happening with his nose. <laughs> I just tried to go on a limb, but it still turned out kind of cute. I like the little hat on him. And then of course I made an owl and I made mine out of brown with some other, I think this was just all de-stashed yarn. I didn't really have a, a good stash at that point And I just had some random colors that I picked up. It's like a, a bag at a yard sale, I think of just some scraps. And it really came into use for this project and then this one is probably my favorite and I went all out and put a button on it and I actually got a safety nose from 6060 eyes they are my go-to place for any kind of safety eyes or safety noses I'm gonna link their shop down below I buy from them or I used to buy from all the time but I have quite of a big stock at this point and I just love to use their stuff however I'm sure everyone knows, but just as a reminder for this holiday season, you never want to use safety eyes or safety noses for anyone who is under the age of three or a pet, a cat or a dog, because they are plastic. They can break off. I've seen them break and it becomes a choking hazard. This is another one of those little forms that Deborah had got me and she had actually just wrapped the yarn around this one. It's not sure where she got these from. I'm sure she'll watch this video and she can mention down below where she got the little forms. Another one of the little forms from Deborah. I think I tried to wrap the yarn on this one and why it looks so ugly. It looks like I'm just trying to choke the sheep. This is not handmade but this is a really cute idea so lion brain used to put out these little bitty samples of yarn but you can easily make this by making little mini skeins and i forgot these come in a whole pack i may have got them at hobby lobby but i just got them and put a christmas hook in the middle of them and i just think it's a cute way to decorate a tree in a craft room with little bitty yarn skeins and so that's what I did with these. I've got several colors. It seems like there was one more color. I don't know where it is. Maybe it was a black. But they just look really cute as ornaments. And they're great for filling up random holes in the tree where it just needs a little something. I did find two more of those hand crocheted ornaments that I got from the thrift store. They're different styles. So I'm going to stick those on the tree. And this is something that I made. This used to be one of my favorite Christmas things to make. So easy. I would always find vintage glass balls at the thrift store. And you can put ammonia in them. Ammonia or Clorox? Clorox. And then pour Clorox in them. And it loosens up the paint that's inside. Wear gloves. And you can see where I was doing this one. And it still has some of the paint chips in it. And then once that gets out, you just put some glitter in and shake it and the glitter just kind of sticks to the glass. And then you have this really pretty ornament. I probably made this one, it's probably been at least 20 years ago. I was probably, I remember making this in my first apartment when I was in college. So that's how long this thing has survived. I love buying those glass balls because I do want to knit and crochet some bobble or ball covers for them. And so we'll be seeing a lot of those kind of things for next year. I've made some other ornaments in my time that are no longer with me. I've gifted them over the years and I keep telling myself I'm going to remake them and I will. One of them is this no drama holiday llama. It's, it was in a Simply Crochet magazine issue number 63. This and I think I actually sewed up a knitting and crochet bag and gave it with the gift as part of that Christmas exchange that I had with the local ladies. And it was so much fun. Another one that I made was the Bird of Happiness. This is by Sarah Kellner. And this is a free pattern download. These things are so simple to make. I do want to make a lot of these for next year because they use scraps. And I think they just look stunning in some fingering weight yarn, some really pretty fingering weight yarns. I do have a special project I want to use with these in mind next year as a decoration. I'm not going to spill the beans or the tea on that one yet. So to make sure that you don't miss that, you need to make sure that you're subscribed and hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying this video and then hit that bell notification so you don't miss that because it's going to be super cute. I did find one more crocheted 
I don't even know. <laughs> this is not very pretty, but I'm okay showing it because this is again, one of the first things I made. I made this also back in 2014, but it is called Pilize, P-I-L-D-E. It is a free magic mushroom that I made into an ornament and I really need to tack that in. I meant to go back and tack that in. I just haven't got around to it. So it kind of sits like that. But if you don't tack it in, your mushroom kind of gets kind of loopy. But I, 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 it's not horrible. The last ornaments that I want to talk about that I made are very, very special to me. I made these last year or the year before. I made these in 2021. And I bought this kit a long time ago from a little skein in the big wool and it was a collaboration with susan claudino who again i'm pretty sure you're probably tired of hearing me talk about this lady and knitted wit so knitted wit dyed the yarn out of her jawbreaker base but this is the nutcracker trio oh my goodness these are amazing so little skein put the kit together and got the little the little crown and things to go with it and the sword from the Nutcracker and the crown for the Mouse King and Knitted Wit dyed the yarn jawbreaker and then Susan Claudina wrote the pattern and there was like a little bag I think that went with these. I'm so glad I got this kit. It is absolutely amazing. But these are my Nutcracker trio. The way that they are written up is just so easy to follow, but that Mouse King is absolutely everything. I mean, he is so cute with his tail, and he has a belt. Oh my goodness. Look at her shoes. I mean, she has little ballerina slippers. So much thought process went to these that they will always be one of my favorite things that I have ever knitted in my life.